Hello, everybody. My name is Christian Gross, and there are two things that make me anxious. Um, those are public speaking and the dentist, both of which I'm doing today. So as you can imagine, I'm having the time of my life right now. Nonetheless, I'm happy to present you a modelic library for thermal runaway propagation in lithium-ion batteries. So, why does this not continue? Oh yeah, there we go. So what can you expect from this presentation? First, I'm going to talk about the motivation behind the library. Then I'm going to introduce the thermal runaway model, which is the backbone of the library. Then I will talk about the library's structure and some key models give you some examples of the library in use and discuss what we have learned over the course of these 15 minutes. So let's get to it. Um, since the introduction of lithium ion batteries, they have changed our day to day lives drastically. Um, they have enabled technologies such as smartphones, laptops and even electric vehicles, which are on the roads today. However, um, since the early days, it has been known that those batteries are not perfectly safe. Um, this is due to their thermal instability, which can lead to a strong exothermic reaction called thermal runaway, in which the cell basically disintegrates. Um, you can see such a disintegrated cell here, uh, which was, this is a photo taken from one of our experiments. This cell was penetrated with a nail, um, after which it went into the thermal runaway instantly. And not only is the heat release of the thermal runaway a problem, but also the release of toxic gas and cancer genus particles. Um, yeah, there have been several well-known incidents with those batteries. The last I think was in Australia with the Tesla battery fire of some uh, solar power plant, I think. Yeah, the problem is once one cell starts to undergo thermal runaway, uh, it's very likely that it will ignite adjacent cells, which then re leads to a chain reaction where the whole battery pack catches fire very quickly. And of course, this fire is very dangerous and it's hard to put out and a real challenge to firefighters. But because we use the cells in our day-to-day -day lives, uh, we need to assess the safety of these cells to make sure that they are safe for consumer use. And with that mentioned, you have to do some tests on these cells. And because these cells release high amounts of heat, toxic gas and particles, you need to do some live testing on these batteries, which is of course expensive because you need to take very high safety precautions. So with that being said, it is desired that there is a fast and reliable, uh, reliable model so you can do some of the workload virtually. And this is where we come in. Let's talk about the thermal runaway model. In this plot, you can see data gathered from a thermal runaway experiment at our laboratory. Um, you can see here the temperature plotted over time. Uh, the temperatures are measured at the cell surface and at 18 different points. And you may notice a little kink at around 140 degrees Celsius. This is due to uh, the first venting. The cell, once reaching a certain point in its formal life, um, starts to disintegrate. And in this process releases gas within the cell. As the cell is closed, uh, the pressure inside the cell increases until the cell bursts open violently. And of course, this releases the gas and transports away some heat from the cell. But we do not stop there. We continue to heat the cell until it reaches the point at around 190 degrees. Of course, this is different for varying cell types, but here it's 190 degrees. At this point, the cell transits into a thermal runaway. And you can see it pretty much instantly shoots up to around 750 degrees. Again, this peak can vary from cell to cell. Rule of thumb is the bigger the cell, the bigger the boom. So very big cells can easily exceed 1,500 degrees Celsius. And of course, this is a problem for consumer electronics or vehicles. Now, to 
put this into a model, we take the derivative of these curves and plot these derivatives over the temperature. And assuming that cells of the same type behave the same way, this curve can let us dictate the cell's behavior. And to simplify this very fuzzy curve, um, we put a piecewise linear approximation in this plot, which yields us the blue curve. And you can see at the peak of the temperature rate, uh, we set this curve constant, because we believe that the decline in temperature rate after this point is due to heat loss to the ambient. That's why we chose to set it constant to more accurately depict the cell's behavior. Now, as I said, we approximate this curve. This lets us dictate the cell's behavior. Then what we need to do is we need to figure out when to stop the reaction. And for that, we need to calculate the enthalpy change, uh, which is done by multiplying the cell's thermal capacity times the temperature difference during thermal runaway. Now, if we were to look at the single cell in an isolated environment, that would be enough. However, due to the desire to have interactions with the environment, um, we need to have another way to stop the reaction um, rather than temperature change based. So we need to consider the energy a cell has available. And as you can see, the energy depletion of the cell is linked directly to the heat release. But it is decoupled, which lets us have interactions with the environment and still put the reaction to a halt when all the energy has been released. Now, there are some upsides and downsides to this approach. On the plus side, this is a very computationally inexpensive approach. So it takes very little time to calculate and well, runs very nice and smooth. And also you don't need to fit a curve. Um, the other approach that we could have taken modeling this is taken Arena's equation and fit the parameters. So they depict the cell's behavior. And with this approach, we can just leave that out and go directly from the measurement to a simulation. On the downside, this is not very insightful for single cells. Well, not very, it's not at all insightful. There is nothing new to be learned when looking at single cell simulations. Um, it only becomes interesting when you start looking at bigger configurations. And as we do not consider the ambient heat loss, we may underestimate uh, the temperature rate actually, and also the enthalpy, which we should keep in mind. Moving onward to the library. The library is organized by complexity starting at a very low level with the interfaces, sources, sensors, and components, and going upwards through the various stages of the cell's development from subsystems to architectures to cell and module and even pack models. All stages of the development are present in the library, so you can just jump in at any point and branch off and start your own models going from any stage. There even is a nice little tutorial in the user's guide, which was added for some more user friendliness, as we want this to be available to everyone and have even beginners experiment with these things and maybe gather some insightful data. There are very many examples in this library to showcase what it can do. And of course, it will be available to everyone under the free clause BSD license. The most important model of this library is, of course, the formal runaway model. And this is just a direct implementation of the simple tracing model that I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, here you can see we measure the temperature, which is an input for the heat emission function, which is the blue curve we saw on the plot earlier, which is then taken to the power and input into this heat conversion model which just sets the heat conversion, uh, the energy conversion rate. This is then emit emitted as heat and put out through the heat port. The permanent switch um, is here in place to ensure that uh, the thermal runaway is permanent. So 
once the heat emission function exceeds a certain output level, the switch will switch on and tell any other systems in our cell model that thermal runaway is in progress and we're past the point of no return. This is then put into a, oh, oh yeah. The heat emission function, of course, uh, corresponds to the temperature rate. The capacity of the energy storage is the enthalpy, delta H, and the conversion corresponds to calculating uh, the energy depletion and thermal runaway is irreversible. Then we move on to the cell model where you can see in the middle, this is the thermal runaway implemented into it. And we also have an electric model, which is at this point very basic. It's just a resistor and a voltage source. This is just there in place uh, for when we go further and integrate a full electric model, maybe someday. And of course, we have the chemical model, which is the thermal runaway model, which I just, just talked about. And we have the thermal model, which handles heat distribution and temperature increase. These just consist of uh, heat capacitors and thermal resistances. These thermal resistances also lower their resistance once thermal runaway is in progress. Um, this was done because we do not model gas release, which is a major factor contributing to thermal runaway propagation. And as we do not have that, we need to have some way to accelerate the propagation speed. That's why we have done that. And of course, there are some parameter records present just to par parameterize all the models. We can then use these cell models and plug them together to form a module, which is thermally and electrically connected. Yeah. So this is the first meaningful case we have. Now let's talk about some examples. Uh, the first example is a single cell experiment to just show what the resulting temperature curve would look like. You still have uh, only about two or three minutes. So. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, um, you can see the cell is heated up at its first heating element, the second heating element is turned off. This is just here in place, uh, so the heat has some place to go and to make the temperature decline after reaching maximum temperature. So you can see the temperature rises fairly quickly at around 80 degrees, there's a little kink. This is when the thermal resistance is lower. And yeah, this is actually not desired, but there's a choice we have to make. Um, we can either have the thermal resistance lower on both sides of the resistor, uh, when, when the resistor exceeds the temper uh, temperature at both sides or at one side. And if it only exceeds, at, uh, if it only lowers the resistance on one side, then you don't, do not have the propagation speed increase that is desired, but you get rid of this kink. So we decided to leave this kink in because we are interested in propagation behavior. Then we go on to a module example, which is basically the same setup for the single cell, only that here is a module present and you can see the thermal runaway propagates cleanly through all the cells in about 100 seconds. And now we move on to the big boy, that is the battery pack model. Again, the first cell of the first module is heated until it transits into a thermal runaway. And at this point, the heater is turned off and the model is left on its own. And as you can see in the resulting temperature plot, so each little rectangle here represents a cell, um, the thermal runaway propagates fairly quickly through all the cells in the battery pack. Yeah. What does all that mean? Well, we have a fast and easy to use model. The 
simulation time for the battery pack is between one and three hours, which is fairly good compared to finite element method models. Um, I have never seen battery pack simulations done before. So this enables battery pack simulations, which I think is very cool. However, as said before, we do not consider venting, which is a downside for now, but something we have to work on in the future. We are counteracting this with lowering the thermal resistance, however, so we get kind of correct behavior for now, but it's not validated yet. So there's not really any point in talking about whether this is correct or not for now. But to end on a positive note, it will be available to everyone under the free, free clause BSD license. Now I will be happy to take your questions.